We play and call it work. Hey everybody, Matthew and Steve here from MiniWarGaming.com and welcome to our next Warhammer 40k narrative campaign, The Shattered Imperium. It's been a little while since I've done a Warhammer 40k narrative campaign because we've been busy with moving, with our new website, with all the new releases from Games Workshop, but it's back. And so this is a continuation of the cinematic universe that I have been creating with, uh, and actually not just me, Miles Drake has been the author of several of them. All started back in the first Death Watch campaign, Augustine Station. Long time ago. A long time ago. Now, it, technically, all of our narrative campaigns are, far, are part of the same uh, cinematic universe, but the tale of Inquisitor Rin and the Yamurian artifacts is a story that we've kind of developed over multiple campaigns. Now, if you're new, or if you haven't seen those narrative campaigns, well, you're in luck, because there's two things that I'm going to do for you today. The first one is I'm going to, in a separate video, do a, what I hope to be a short recap of everything that's happened from the beginning. So it'll, it'll hit all the important spots and that'll be, we'll put that in the video description below. That way if you already know what's happened or you don't care, uh, because you can watch this, it's like watching Avengers, right? You can just jump in and watch Avengers. True. But it's nicer if you've also watched if the ones. seen all the post credit clips. Oh, that too, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and so I'll have that video. The second thing I'm going to do for you, and we haven't done a giveaway in a little while, is we're going to do a vault giveaway. Because our narrative campaigns, the way they work is we put an episode out for free, and then an episode goes in the mini wargaming vault, and then the next episode goes out for free, and the next episode goes in the mini wargaming vault. So truly, they are vault exclusive campaigns, if you really think about it. Because you have to be a vault member in order to enjoy the entire story. You can still, if you're not a vault member, watch the battle reports and have fun seeing all the crazy stuff that happens. But you're not going to be able to follow the whole story. And so what I've done is we put all of the Inquisitor Rin narrative campaigns into one giant giveaway. Which will be also at a link below. So if you'd like, you can go back and watch those. Uh, all you have to do is click the link. It does require you to sign up for a vault membership, but the nice thing about the giveaways is even if you cancel your vault membership, we let you keep the giveaway. So it's a nice risk-free way of trying out the vault. It's a seven-day trial for the vault as well, so you can literally pay no money um, and just go check it out. And it is the number one way that we run this business. It provides us with the 80 to 90 percent of our revenue, so thank you vault members. If you're already a vault member, well, sit back and enjoy. So, this is going to continue the tale of Inquisitor Ren, and, the, and it's called the Shattered Imperium. You'll find out why soon enough. And uh, so we're just going to, without further ado, jump right into the first story time. Grab your popcorn and enjoy. Rin stepped out from the swirling mass of impossible colors as an overwhelming wash of vertigo sent him to his knees. The desolate world and the vast hollow cavern loomed around him, battered by eons of frozen winds, blanketed in layers of rime. What? He held out his metallic, masterfully articulated hands before him. Yes, he remembered. His new form, the metal body gifted to him by the heretic Magus. He remembered the search, the mad hunt, the betrayal. The rogue traitor, Anara Kane. Yes, that had been her name. She had betrayed him at the end, her and the Death Watch. They'd interrupted his passage into the portal and it had disrupted things. It had, had they betrayed him? Or did he betray them? He remembered the trail that led him to the Emperor Forsaken World beyond the Galactic Rim. He remembered golden corpses along the way. Custodes, a fellow Inquisitor, killed at his command. He remembered the bargain he made with the Ymir. Had he betrayed them? He shook his head as his mind attempted to salvage the memories that had been destroyed. The portal. He remembered that. What came after? What had he found on the other side? The scepter he carried. It had clattered to the ground in front of him when he'd emerged. He reached for it and rose to his feet. It wasn't of Imperial make. It wasn't even of human origin. It looked alien. No less alien than the Ymir artifacts he still wore. Rin looked back to where the portal was. The colors had faded. It was gone. Luminous one, he called. He knew how to address it now. Yes, the voice in his crown answered. The other Ymir had long gone silent. He remembered that much. Only the crown spoke now. What happened? Why do I remember nothing? Rin demanded, his mechanical voice shuddering in agitation. And if he was to be honest with himself, fear. We were driven out, the voice returned, paradoxically melodic and monotone all at once. The presence drove us away. What presence? 
You do not remember. The voice almost seemed to mock him. A pity that the frailty of the mortal mind was not excised along with that of the mortal body. What presence? Rin demanded again, harder and considerably more angry. The thief of the spiral flame, the crown said. Your mind erased its own memories to better shield you from witnessing its true form. It was there, waiting for us, in the unspace of the Old One's vault. My mind erased its damnation, Rin cursed, testing his steps as he started moving forward through the frozen ruins within the hollow mountain. He glanced around cautiously. The Death Watch had turned on him alongside the rogue trader. The Necrons had arrived too. Whoever won that battle might still be lurking around, but he saw nothing. He started moving through the ruins. He didn't know where he was going, but he knew standing around was going to amount to nothing. Perhaps if he found enemies, they might provide some answers. And as much as Ren preferred working through proxies, he was still an Inquisitor. An extraordinary one at that. He could handle himself. This thief, what is it specifically? Why was it waiting for us in the Old One's vault? He demanded again. Not the us that includes you, the crown mused. The us referring to my fellows, the last Gimmer, that has already taken the others of my kind. We cannot say how it got into the vault, but it stayed there, knowing we would eventually return. So my entire endeavor played into his hand? Rin was not pleased. Had he really wasted so many years, so many lives? It was not entirely fruitless, the crown offered. You were able to plunder some artifacts from the vault prior to being forced out by the thieves and mortal servants, and you alerted us to its presence. You have forced its hand by survival. I'll ask again, Rin said, annoyed at the crown's evasiveness. What is this thief? The one who stole the heart of our people. The spiral flame. It is an envoy of the one you know as the changer of ways. But I would advise caution. I sense hollow, wretched souls nearby. Rin raised the scepter and saw the somewhat familiar Yamurian orbs that he had also obtained in the vault. Fantastic, he said. I yearn for answers. May the accursed enemy provide. Oh, I doubt you'll be so lucky, the crown mused, moments before the hunch distorted shapes emerged from the ruins. Inquisitor Rin notices the Urghuls coming out of the ruins, hissing and growling at him. Before we even start, we're going to roll for initiative. And basically the way this is going to work is we both roll, but Steve will win ties because, you know, well, okay. <laughs> Because he's the he's the player character, so player characters should always have that advantage, right? Why don't you roll sixes? Sometimes yeah, also. apparently, apparently. <laughs> well, I think we're gonna move towards these ghouls over here. They're all individuals. I mean, chain line set on that one. Junior phase. I want to put all my pistol shots into this ghoul right here. So you're gonna use your orbs, which have the pistol profile. Yeah. All of these rules can be found online on our tools and rules section of Mini Wargaming. Oh, he hits on twos. This is one. These are strength five, so twos or threes to wound. Ooh, only one wound. Urghuls have a five up invulnerable save. It does not ignore it, so you do D3 wounds, or D3 damage. Ah, oh. oh, they got three wounds each, too. He's down to two. Assaulting? We're gonna charge these two. And you make it. Oh yeah. And you charge, so you get to pick your targets. Well, we'll just... You're gonna split them? Yep. So you uh, got four two. attacks. Yep, okay, so what we're gonna so do. Two and two. We're gonna put green on this guy. Okay, so all at the same time, hitting on twos. All hit, wounding on three. So it's the same profile that it shoots that it uses in combat. So three of them get through. We've got five up in Vulns. Ooh, <laughs> only one gets through and does one damage. <laughs> Go, Rin! Woo! So this one's down to two. And now they're both going to attack back. Four attacks each, hitting on threes. Ooh, six hits. Strength four, but Rin with his mechanical body is tough as five. So five's to wound. Oh, wow, that was decisive. The Urghuls run in and charge. This one comes here, a double one, it'll fail its charge. It's in. So these two will go first. Actually, I can do three of them, basically. So two of them, and then I'll select one, and then you'll get to fight. Let's do the first two, because I only have eight dice in my hand. Threes to hit. Ooh. Fives to wound. Got two wounds there, you got a three up save. You're fine. Oh, sorry, when they charge, they get two extra attacks. So there should be four extra attacks. Hitting on threes. Wounding on fives. And one more wound on a three-up save. Oh, he takes it! Rin's beefy, though. He's got ten wounds to start, so he's down to nine. And now we'll have the one attack. He did not charge, so threes to hit and fives to wound. One wound with a three-up save. He's fine. So only this one hasn't fought yet, so Rin gets to fight. How would you like to attack? Put two into the one that hasn't fought. And then one to each of the wounded guys. Ooh, really going for it. So I got this, I got this. The guy that, the guy that didn't fight, two's to hit. 
and threes to wound. Five up invulns. Oh, they get through. D3 damage each. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> so he's down to one. Now one attacking to him and one attacking to him. And we'll split these up. Different dice colors. Green on green, white on blue. There we are. Threes to hit. Or sorry, twos to hit, threes to wound. Okay. <laughs> Five up invuln. Okay, D3 damage each. Oh, well, he kills the green and he wounds the other one. So with the orbs, he just like, he's just basically walking in, just brrrr, with his hands, and finally one of the Urgles succumbs to the energy field. Now it is Rin's turn. Did you want it to stay in combat? I do. His, I his? I think it's time, I'm gonna lay you right here. You deserve, you should be dead, I'm gonna power myself up. Okay, so Rin has a rule where, he normally has a four up invuln because of an energy field, but he can sap the energy field, it'll reduce it to a six up invuln, but then all his weapons have plus one attack, strength, AP, and damage. So he gets to shoot him as pistols first. How did you want to fire them? Okay, so we're going to put... You have five attacks now. One, one, and three. Okay. So split oh. up like that. So green on green, yellow, or sorry. No, green on the fresh, well, yellow on green. Okay, yellow on green, go. <laughs> so these are twos to hit, threes to wound. I actually oh. like this method. Yeah, five up. So we get through one and D3 damage each. Ah, oh, you kill the one, and you kill the other. All oh, other plus one damage on top of that, so. But you killed him even without the plus one damage. And then you can continue channeling. He turns around as the lightning is coming out and focuses it into the last one. So five attacks on twos and then threes. This should get him. Oh, because they do. Oh, he only has one wound left, so I have to make all three of these. Ooh, mm -hmm. close, close. And he fries the last one. Rin then will continue on his way, cautiously looking around. And as he comes around this corner, you see a downed, looks like... I know the, the model doesn't look it, but it's been long abandoned here. Like, it's been crashed here for a while. A Corvus Black Star of the Death Watch. What would you like to do? Well, I might as well try it out, right? Okay. So as you move over here, there's two things that you notice. One is that it's spilled out a lot of cargo. As you kind of sift through the cargo, you find that there's a lot of uh, special issue ammunition. Oops. Which is no use to you. Oh. At least right now. <laughs> And the second thing that you notice as you come this way is that you hear the sounds of fighting over here. You hear small arms fire, you hear strange energy weapons that sound kind of Eldari. But um, and you but you hear also shouting. I think the wise thing to do would be like to kind of creep up and, and look over. Okay, as you look over. Our quarry arrives just as the skeins promised. The Eldari Psyker called. Rin recognized the Inari markings on his Wraithbone armor. Ensure that the traveler survives. Beside the warlock, the witch hunter directed the imperial forces into a tighter defensive cordon, while the Aldari continued moving around the, to flank the oncoming heretics. As odd as the alliance of Eldari and humans was, Rin's gaze was fixated on the shifting shapes of the heretics. Each carried a mirror disc pendant. As Rin zoomed his mechanical vision in on them, he saw the pendants did not show the reflection they should, but a writhing, coiling shape, like dancing polychromatic flame. And worse, he recognized it. Rin staggered back as pain, real pain, lanced through the memory of his eyes. He hadn't felt anything like that in a very long time. They arise, the crown whispered. Rin thought he heard fear in its alien voice. The thief's aberrant will manifest. Rin looks down and he can see the coalition of the Eldar and the humans working together, which he will now gain control of Steve. On the one flank, we've got some chaos cultists and a rogue psyker floating behind them. And on the other flank, we've got some traitor guardsmen and what appears to be a character with a very heavy flamer, because there's a flamer in there too, but this one seems to be even more powerful, and a rogue psyker floating behind them. Roll for initiative. You win ties. You got initiative again. Take it. Movement phase. All right, so the scions are gonna move on forward. Gonna take on the traitor guardsman head on. Yeah. And we're gonna go against all logic and we're gonna split our forces. <gasps> Splitting the party. And the Eldar. We're gonna go this way. But. What about your this two guy, characters? He's like, no, I'm gonna join them, and he's gonna join them. Yeah, if that makes sense. And Rin will take the energy field and use it to teleport. Mm -hmm. He gets to teleport 3d6 inches. He has to teleport somewhere that he can see or that he's been before. This is to prevent Steve from jumping forward to areas <laughs> that he would not know are currently clear. Uh, well, I think we're heading this way. Infinite vertical. So nine inches. We got a bit of a psychic phase. We got a warlock here, and he's got uh, was it protect and jinx or destroy? Destructor. 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 Go ahead and do that uh, unsuccessfully. Unsuccessfully with a four. Shooting phase. The shurikens unload into the cultists. Hitting on threes. Oh, hold on. Before you do this, at the beginning, oh. Abraxas 
has, this is a Braxis Mole, as we're going to find out. He's got an ability where he can basically point out, because you can see that he's pointing. Yeah. He looks closely. And he points at the unit, and anybody who can see him gets to re-roll ones against that unit. So he's going to point at them. Yeah. So re-roll those ones. A couple more hits. Winning on threes. Oh no, okay, well. So this one does the AP that, what's, what's the AP when I get six? Minus three, so they only need minus one. So the six up saves, so one saved, three of them die to that. So blammo down these ones. And the Braxis. He's gonna fire his uh, pistol into the Colossus. So well. he's got a special Centurion pattern plasma pistol, which is basically just a double shot pistol. Not gonna supercharge? No. Oh, good thing. Oh, he gets three roll ones though. So yeah, I'm pointing over there. Yeah, that's right. So only one of them hit, because he's a three up ballistic skill. Sorry, I cut you off because Oh, you, thought, you thought he was a two. I thought he was better. Oh, uh, no, that wound. No, that's, yeah, strength seven, toughness three, so that kills another one. Over here. All right, well, I think we're going to start off with the uh, hotshot lads. This guy is a character, just so you know. Yeah. So you got two characters over we'll, here. We'll get him, we'll get him. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Uh, hotshot last, just into the Trader Guardsman. So nine shots with the pistol in there. Hey, they're, they're pretty good wow. shots. Wow. <laughs> they could have been a five up to hit, and most of those would have hit. Only four is to wound. But there might be a nice armor penetration of those hot shot last guns just plow right through them and five of them die. And then Rin? Yeah, you're gonna fire into the same traitor guardsman. Hits on twos. And wounds on threes. Two. Minus one AP, so I get six up. Two more die. Taking these ones. Little rule that I forgot, he's of the Order of Hereticus, so he gets to reroll hits and wounds against Chaos and Psychers. So there was one of his plasma shots against them that missed, so let's reroll it, and now it hits, and killed one more. Warlock's pistol. I'll fire it back over here. The cultist? Yeah. Hitting on, oh, no, no reroll once. Oh, he, you can see He can see the pointer guy. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, never mind. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to hit him. Mm -hmm. Assault phase. Cyanus going after those cultists. I mean, not cultists. The traitor guards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a long charge that way. <laughs> So just them? Yeah. So they'll overwatch. Overwatch with the flamer, D6 auto hits. Six auto hits. Oh, it's hosing them down. Threes to wound. Oh, one wound. I rolled lots of ones and twos. Good four up carapace armor. Nope. One of them still dies to that. The guy in the back, of course, got hit by the flames in the front. And we still have the other auto gun. We're gonna throw um, a frag grenade from the leader. So frag grenade will be six shots. We'll just wrap that in with the auto gun, last gun, whatever he has, hitting on fours. Hitting on sixes. Sixes, I mean, which <laughs> was pretty much what I got anyways. And fours to wound. So two wounds with a four up carapace armor save, which means, oh, very effective overwatch, but at least it wasn't into one of your important characters. Hey, we're not important. Charge distance. I do want to roll a big cut. No, Six inch. Gonna go just kind of wrap over there. Well, Warlock? Well, yeah, the Warlock's gonna go ahead and save squad of Trader Guardsmen. So just into them? Yeah. <gasps> yes. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. No problemo. What about Inquisitor Rin? Wait, Rin is gonna go at. You know, I want to declare against both. Against well, obviously them. No. Well, you might as well. Two. Well, yeah, but you can declare against them too because they're already. Well, if I make it to that one, I'm making it to this one. I'm definitely not going there. Oh, okay, so yeah. these two then. Okay, heavy flamer Overwatch. D6 auto hits. Two auto hits. Four is the wound. So two wounds, uh, and it's minus one, four. so you get a four up save. You take a wound. Down to eight. We got a last pistol on the Rogue Psyker, which misses. Charge distance, seven. Uh -oh. Well, that'll get you to the big Trader Guardsman with the Heavy Flamer. You got eight wounds. This side? Yeah, Guardian's gonna go after the Fuel Occultus. Overwatch. We got a Flamer in there. Three auto hits. A wound on threes. Ooh, only one wound. I can't roll the wound with the Flamers. You're good. You're good. And then the auto guns for the rest of them hit on sixes. Went on fours. Nothing. Charging! Seven inches! I think they are in. You're gonna leave space for your uh, witch hunter there? I'm gonna see. Yep. He's gonna declare a charge against both of them. Against them and them? So Just in case. Around. Yeah, they're all pretty high, but you can go through your runes if you did. Nah, five uh, inches. Five. five just gets you up to the front there. And, oh, oh hold on. I'm gonna see if I want to. Uh, no, we're not going to do any heroic <laughs> interventions here. We're not. We're not heroic. So warlock first into yep. the traitor guardsman. Which blade hits on threes? Hmm. hmm. Nope. Uh, Scions. Uh, yeah. Into the guardsman. So the tempester has an extra attack with the chainsaw, and he hits on threes. Now, why don't you just throw one more yep. in there for the on fours first. to hit the other one? Nope. And then we're looking at fours to wound. We got five up saves on those traitor guardsmen, and one dies. We're gonna keep our flamer alive. And Rin into this traitor 
somebody. I'm not quite sure who he is. Twos. Oh. He hits on twos, no re-rolls. Well, wounded on. He's wounded on threes. Oh, okay. He's strength five. You think that guy's toughness five? Maybe. No, he's not toughness five. That's power gas. Uh, minus one AP, so I got a five up save. On D3 damage. Two damage, he's not dead. He's down to two of his four wounds. Next up. Well, these guys are gonna fight first. These deadly Eldar guarding defenders are hitting on threes. So. Hmm. Uh, I, uh, did you, did I still you, point at them? You, well, every phase you can point at something new. Oh, I'll point at them. So you point at them. So reroll those ones. <laughs> He's like, fight them better. Ah! <laughs> Four is? Uh, yeah, only four soon. And six up saves. Now, you kill two of them still. Not bad for totally whiffing your dice rolls. Braxis has a bionic fist. He hits on threes with it. Reroll against chaos. Yes, yeah, right. And um, he wounds on threes. It's strength five right now. And it's AP something, so it kills. These two. Did he want to consolidate? Yes, he is not afraid of no smite. Okay. Oh, he's not. We're going to pile in like this and like this. And we're going to have both of them attack the warlock. The four attacks between the two of them because of the brutal close combat weapon. Hitting on fours. Wounding on fours. Nothing. And the big guy will use his flamer in close combat. He's only got two attacks with it though. Fours to hit. Boom. Okay. Into our morale phase, they are leadership seven with their with their leader, and they lost eight guys, so they're automatically gonna lose at least two more. So these guys run away from the fight. Cowards. And to my turn, this rogue psyker is just gonna float ominously over here, looking straight at Abraxas. He turns to point. This rogue psyker moves close to that warlock. And the psychic phase, we're gonna try for a smite on the warlock. We got it, which you can try to deny it if you roll seven or higher. You do. And this one will try to smite as well. Remember, this is not match play, so there's no increase in difficulty for smite. Hmm. That's he perils. Oh, wait, they reroll once. Oh. But they peril on any doubles. Ah. So seven. Now, Abraxas has a special rule where any psychic power that affects him, if he rolls equal to or higher than what the roll was, it doesn't affect him. It doesn't stop it from affecting others in the case of like something that would hit multiple things. So you roll seven or higher. Can't hurt me! Yeah, he just uh, shakes it off. I'm still pointing at you. Gonna fire a last pistol at your warlock. We miss. And one at Abraxas. Also misses. And this one will charge into the warlock. You can overwatch with your little pistol. Huzzah! Oh. No. And he makes it. And we'll charge Abraxas. Now, do you want to overcharge this? You get to reroll. Remember, it's, he's Chaos and Psyker. He gets to reroll everything. No. No? No. no. You don't die on ones with his. You, no, I know, but uh, no. You reroll that one. Reroll. So, only one hits. Uh, threes. Uh, twos, actually. I believe you toughness four. The Rogue Psyker toughness four? Oh, no, he's only got four wounds. Okay. Or, sorry, toughness three. three. He's got four wounds. So he's down to three, and then he charges in. He's gonna smack you with his chaos staff. Hitting on fours. Wow. Right here against Abraxas. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Do fours have, to wound. Do you have death of the false emperor? No, he does not. Okay. Yeah, these are the rogue psycho rules from Blackstone Fortress. I don't remember when it doesn't apply. And so one gets there. And it's minus one, so you get your five up invuln. Nope. Ooh. So he takes D3 wounds. One. Brings you down to four. Chargers are done, so he'll attack. Hitting on fours. And it's a uh, strength five in close combat as well, so fours to wound. Basically the same stats as... Oh, a wound. Yeah, that's actually a wound, because it's minus one. He basically gets a weaker version of the heavy flamer rules in close combat. Fighting back, Abraxas gets four attacks, rerolling failed. So threes to hit. And he's strength five, so threes to wound. Reroll. And that'll kill him, because he has no invuln. And against the other rogue psyker with your little warlock. Our right, threes here with the witch blade. And two's the wound. Okay, and this is minus one. Uh, it's actually, no, no AP. No AP. Five up save. Ooh, nice. I made it. And then Rin will try to figure out, finish off this guy. Oh, love it. Hitting on twos, no rerolls. Hitting on threes. And this minus one, so I get a five up. Oh, he's dead. And then you consolidate to the other rogue psyker. As the body of the rogue psyker falls to the ground here, you feel a psychic pulse emanate from it, and the other rogue psyker grips its head and starts to scream. And all of a sudden, reality is torn right around him, and the psyker is actually killed. 
And out of the war pops a unit of five pink horrors and a huge exalted flamer leers over at Inquisitor Rin and the Warlock. This goes back to your turn. You are locked in combat with them with your two characters. Well, I'm gonna battle focus. Oh, no, there's no point. Yeah, I'll do that anyway. We'll run. So you're gonna run your... Advance in the... Oh, I love it. Yeah, because they can advance and fire without any penalty. Sweet nine-inch move. As long as they don't have any heavy weapons. Brax also gonna advance. Oh, Ooh. not the point. Yeah, <laughs> his job is... Ah, oh, big ones! Second phase? Oh, uh, no, no, actually these ones are gonna... Oh, right, right, you still have these. I don't think I can get closer. Maybe I can try to get a little sure. closer. But it's model by model, right? Psychic powers! Oh, yeah, we're gonna do Destructor. And we'll try to stop it. Oh, no, they can only do half the one die. So, it goes through, does one mortal wound. The Warlock tears through the warp and blasts one of the horrors, which instantly splits apart the two blue horrors who cackle as they look back at you. Shooting phase! Well, I guess the Guardians are gonna shoot the Blue Horrors now. No, they're part of the same unit. They get added to the unit. Are you sure? Yeah. That so now, so no, you're on, you're on. <laughs> they, they do join the unit. I know that is horrible. It's something that we don't see very often, because in match play, you have to pay for the Blue Horrors. But this is frickin', this is narrative play that's kind of open play. So we'll just make up stuff as we're going along. So, shooting phase. Yeah. He has pistol shots, and yeah. he has a pistol shot. So we'll do his first. So four shots into the uh, into the horse. Yeah. Hitting on twos, <laughs> winning on threes. Okay. Uh, no rerolls. Okay. We'll put them on the pink horse, who have a four up in vuln. And they ignore him. Woo! And then we've got the warlock. This is night hot. This is 40 days night hot. <laughs> Don't do this to me, bro. <laughs> warlock. Go ahead, warlock. Take a shot. He hits. He wounds. It's got a... It a, does nothing. <laughs> Minus three, though. Doesn't matter. They're in vuln. Now you put your signs in such a way that they could target the flamer. Yeah. Three shots between I'm, the two of them. I'm actually gonna do... Hold on, are you pointing at them? You can point at somebody. I'm pointing at them. Oh, whoops. You didn't need that. I'm gonna, well, here's my uh, last gun, or hotshot last gun. Why, why are you doing separate? Throw a grenade. Oh, okay. And this wounds on, I think, about that. And then the grenade. Six shots. Oh, a crack grenade. Right. This is do D3 damage to you. Okay, sure. Three to wound. That I get should a, wound you? You don't I, get those five, right? Yeah, yeah. No, toughness four. Toughness four. Nice. Uh, strength five, toughness four. Uh, four up in bone, though. Not ignored. D3 damage. One damage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Down to three. <laughs> charge phase. Anybody want to charge? Oh, I'll send the science into the, the pink blue horrors. All right, charge on in. You're in. You got to go grind them down way. eventually, right? Where? Oh, it's a character. We're over here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want it to pile in, but it's flamers are pistols. It doesn't care if it's in combat. Well, they get to fight first. The guy with the chainsword hits on threes. The other one hits on fours. Uh huh. Um, I'm assuming you're pointing at I these guys them. with no damage. And now one of these can, two can fight before uh, I go. I will do Rin. Rin? Why is that a question? Twos to hit. I don't want to fight him. Threes to wound. Every time I hit him, there's more of them. <laughs> Four up involves. Yay! You killed one. So we'll kill this one. Just spawn two more blue horrors as it splits open and then disappears. And now they get to fight. They seem really intent on killing that warlock. So we're gonna pile them in such a way that they all can fight them. Start with the pink horrors. They hit on fours and wound on fours. One wound. Save. Four up and horrible. Oh, he's good. I got that too, man. And four blue horrors hitting on fives. Oh, we got three oh, hits. <laughs> yeah, they're very angry. Five's the wound. We got oh. Two wounds. Ah, he takes one of his two wounds. He's down to one. Now he can fight back. Yeah. Uh, three. Reroll the one. Oh, yes, I'm pointing. Because you pointed at him. And twos. We've been on twos. Uh, yeah, at this point, the toughness, the majority no, of the toughness. No, wish blade just wounds on twos. Oh, your wish blade is just that good. Four up in bone on the pink whore. He's fine. Start of my turn. Now this is a this is your one chance. Yeah, start of any turn, he can supercharge. He'll I lose his his involve goes down to the six up. No. But he gets an extra attack. No. No, definitely not. No. Okay. 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 I'll get your I, under I understand. I understand. Okay. So the flamer, hmm, it has it's gonna flies over, and then these guys are going to try to manifest a little piddly smite. They only get to roll a d6. Not manifested. Then it's gonna hose these guys down with its flamer. So D6 auto hits. Two, that wound on threes. One, minus two AP, Ooh. so it kills one. And it can't do its other flamer because one's heavy, one's pistol. 
And then it's going to declare a charge against everybody in this combat. And it goes. Oh wait, we forgot to do the morale check for these guys. Mm. I think we're okay, but let's we'll double check. Yeah, we lost two of them, their leadership six. So one more actually dies, and they don't seven. split when they die. Leadership seven. Oh, leadership seven? Oh yeah, you're right, so nobody runs. Exalted Flamer attacks the Warlock, threes to hit. Ooh, ooh, triple six, threes to wound. Two wounds, minus one AP, so what do you got? Four bin wound. You're alive! And then they'll all attack him as well. Pink horrors will be fours and fours. Nothing. And then the blue horrors will be fives and fives. So two. Nothing! Wow! Warlock's gonna attack the Exalted Flamer. Oh, threes to hit. Two to wound. And four up involves. One gets through. D2 damage. <gasps> Two. Two. Scions, what are they attacking? They're gonna attack the big guy. Oh, sorry, he should be down to one wound. He just did two wounds to him, right? Yeah. So the greens hit on threes, the whites on fours. So two hits, wounding on fives. Nothing. Yeah. Rin's stuck fighting the horrors. Yeah. Uh, Hitting on twos. Yeah. And yeah. wounding on three. Nice. Two, yeah, it would actually be twos, because the majority toughness is two. Oh, you're right. But uh, we're gonna put three of these on pink horrors, four up in mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Another one on pink horror? Hey! So this one will die. And we got more blue horrors! Woo! Yeah, morale won't matter. I just lost one with leadership seven, so now it is your turn. Yeah, we're just gonna go this way. We gotta try and wrap. Oh, actually, we can fit this way. I'm gonna try to wrap around. You just... And a Braxis? Yeah, this is where you're gonna go. Nothing to shoot at, except for pistols. We are going to Destructor. Oh, right. I guess we have to do the pick Yeah, he's closest. Uh, you failed. No. Now your pistol shots. All right, we're going to start off with uh, his pistol backwards. Try to finish him off. Hits. Does not wound. That uh, is. So he hits on twos. Wounds on this is point twos. No rerolls. And we'll put the first two into pink whores. One gets through, another pink whore. Gets through. He killed the pink whores. So we kill a pink whore. Add blue whores. Kill another pink whore. Add blue horrors, so now it's just a unit of blue horrors. And then we got one hot shot last pistol, which misses. Charges! Alright, Brax first, he's gonna go... Everything, obviously. There. And then the... the guardians. Oh. Three inches. So they're stuck only going to him, basically. So. Brax is attacking with his bionic fist, hitting on threes, re-rolling everything, because oh, it's chaos. Yeah. He's good. Wounding on fours, re-rolling everything, because it's chaos. And I got four up in ball, Steve. You ready? Woo! He dies. Oh, no. You got him. You got him. You got him. You got him. You're all good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. And then the Avengers get to go because they... These are Eldar Guardians. Sorry, Guardians. That's what I meant Eldar to say. Man, I, don't I just think... watched Endgame last night, so that's what's on my mind. Two of them can fight. Hitting on threes. Three roll ones. Oh, cause, that's true. Because Braxis pointed is pointing at them. I'm assuming you're pointing at... I was pointing at them because... Of... Yeah, like if there's only one unit, then Braxis... Oh, actually, there's a wound. Here comes three, two. Yeah, three is a wound. Five up in Vol. Hey, you got one. And it splits into a pair of brimstone horrors. And then the non-charger, who are you fighting with before I get to go? The warlock. warlock. He swings with his staff, hits both times, wounds on twos. They get a five up invuln. And you split one more. We'll put one right here. And then they're all gonna pile in and they're all attacking the warlock. Blue horrors first, hitting on fives. One hit, wounding on a five. We got a wound. Four up invuln. Hey, he oh, died. Yeah. The warlock goes down. And the brimstone's attacks are wasted. We got Rin left. Hitting on, on twos, two rerolling ones. ones. And then twos and to wound. Two. Oh. All wound. Five up invulns. And four of them die. And they split into more brimstone horrors. So you kill four more of them. And last of the scions can fight. Tempester hits on threes, the other one hits on fours, and then wounds on threes. These guys are little. Five up in bones on the blue horrors. <laughs> three more. So we'll split those three blue horrors into three more pairs of brimstone horrors. And then you can consolidate into them if you like. No. I'm next. <laughs> into the morale phase, I've lost 12 models with leadership seven. So I'm going to lose five plus four more. That's all but one. <laughs> so all but this blue horror remain. And we're just going to remove the blue horror at this point, too, because. Really, we're just going to watch it go back and forth until I fail a five-up in bowl. 
The witch hunter knelt beside the fallen Eldari Psyker. Dead, I'm afraid, he muttered before standing. The surviving Eldari and humans regarded Rin warily. Weapons down, the witch hunter commanded. This one is an ally. Am I? Rin asked. What is happening here? You are working alongside Xenos. The witch hunter gave a thin smile. I know, a product of the changing times. He shrugged before dipping his hat. A Braxis Maul, witch finder, an agent of the Kelf Pact. Kelf Pact? Rin asked, confused. The world was familiar. The name was not. Nor did he recognize the markings on the humans. While they were armed and armored like inquisitorial agents, the symbols they bore were something else entirely. I take it you've been gone for some time? A Braxis guessed. The last that I remember was the battle that occurred here between the Death Watch, a rogue trader, and the Necrons. And yet I see no signs of it. Rin felt a wash of revelation go over him, and he asked the next logical question, even as he dreaded the answer. When am I? The Braxis chuckled. When indeed. That incident is a thing of ancient lore. Welcome to the 43rd millennium. If Rin could have felt, it would have felt very cold. Come. A seer will have more answers, the witch hunter said. The Inari knew when you'd return. Don't ask me how. I'm just here as insurance. And thus ends episode one of the Shattered Imperium. What truths will Inquisitor Rin find as he follows the witch hunter Abraxas Maul to the Farseer? What will he learn about the fact that he's now in the 43rd millennium? How much time has actually passed? What has happened? What is the Kalth Pact? I have no idea. <laughs> I know, that's the fun oh. part. You don't have to have any idea. We're going to find out more in the next episode of The Shattered Imperium, which will be at the link below in the mini Wargaming Vault. A reminder that you can click that and get a free seven-day trial. Or better yet, if you get the giveaway, it includes this campaign as well. I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning. I should probably go back and uh, make sure that that's clear. But it actually includes all the Inquisitor Rin ones, including this campaign. So even if you end up canceling your membership, you can still watch this whole campaign. You won't be able to see anything else in the vault besides what's in the giveaway if you cancel. But hopefully you'll stick around because it does help support us and help us to make all of these, these narrative campaigns, battle reports, and everything else. So click the link below, and we'll see you in the vault. Happy working.